Let me ask you something, first of all. Uh, you all took this course because you, you want to translate, right? Yeah? You want to translate. So do you see yourself in the future translating as translator? You want to translate. So I'm assuming that uh, <coughs> what you... Ale, do it. Okay. So... Okay, so um, you are, what you'd want to translate is uh, is um, uh, 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 Tibetan literature, which is mainly Dharma, right? Dharma is Chorva. So, uh, is this right that you want to translate Dharma? <coughs> yes, right. So you have all studied Dharma. Huh? I just have no because information Mindo. I don't know anything about you. I would like to have some information. What are you studying? For example, what are you studying? Philosophy. Huh? Buddhist philosophy. Buddhist philosophy. Is every who's studying Buddhist philosophy here? Everybody? Everybody, Everybody. Everybody studying philosophy. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> and philosophy you philosophy you mean what? Majama, Parchim, Uma, Abhidharma, this is this kind of thing, like uh, like in the um, like in the Densasum, Densasum Yorwa, they study. Have you studied Dutra, Lorik, Tarik, Semanamdel? Ah? Dekare, Kashi, Kashi Mes, ah. Semanamdel. Now, something is difficult, very difficult. Parchin, Mundogin, something, Lamrim? Ah? Some Lamrim? Uma? How many have studied Uma? What about um, Tumta? Tumta Shi? You have studied? Okay, okay. So most people have studied most things. Right? Okay. Because I don't want to give you something here and you say, oh, we have not studied this. I don't want to do that. Because otherwise it becomes twice as difficult. Right? I mean, you should know the subject. You should know the topic. Yeah? Uh, sometimes you don't... When I, I translated uh, Kala Chakra, you know, do you call it? And I had to learn this uh, Kaisa. Karsi. I didn't know Karsi, you know. <laughs> I remember I studied with uh, uh, with uh, uh, with uh, and with uh, again Losan Tenzin. Um, no, 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 that's different. Again, Losan Shastri and also one friend in. Um, in England, called Edward Henning, who sometimes comes here. Edward Henning, you know? Do you remember? Kutarin Goto, me, do you know? Konsila Pekebares. I had to study with him. Otherwise, I can't translate. You know? Even now, if, if someone, I don't even know English astrology, Western astrology, I don't know. So uh, it's important that you know the topic. So I, I think what we will do here, nothing too difficult. Uh, mainly it's grammar and vocabulary. And the vocabulary, if you don't know some words, I don't know some words, it's okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because you can always learn later. What is important is, like we did yesterday, you knew all the words. You produced this thing about uh, Tibetan animals, animals of Tibet, right? What, what was important was the finished product. And you all did very well. So today we're going to look at. Um, we're going to. No, we're not going to translate. I'm going to give you um, something from Lamrim Chamo. Nothing difficult, right? Something on Lamrim Chamo. And I'm going to also give you the translation. Lamrim Chamo has been translated into English. I'm sure it's in the library by a team of uh, American scholars. Um, some years ago, uh, you've, you must have seen it. 
it's called um, what's it called stages to enlightenment or something I can't remember so we're gonna what we'll do we'll look at it together go through look at the Tibetan look at the English you know why this word look at this look at the syntax look at the grammar look at the vocabulary if you have any questions ask me you know so it's not a question of you having to translate but just looking and learning I'm not saying that this translation is the best maybe I would do differently but it is a good translation and so we can, you can learn from it okay so it is uh, it may take a long time it may take a long time but it doesn't matter not a Jerry or Marwa no rush so um, this is the Tibetan you just hand the just part this is uh, what we call the, uh, you know, Kyebosum uh, Ra. Here, Kyebo is translated as uh, um, persons uh, or, or capacity, you know. It, it, it's uh, translated as Kyebo uh, means Nupa, Nupa. So some people translate as three persons, some people translate it as uh, uh, capacity. Capacity is in a. Yeah. You understand capacity? Mm. So, um, um, so it says, uh, uh, so, uh, so, 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 in the English, it says, Ningbo Lemba, Kari Ningbo Lemba, Sana Teljur, Mi Rinshin, Mi Lu, Kaisa Tenjur, Tenjur. But here is not Tenjur, right? But in the English, if you look in the English, it says, The actual way to take full advantage of a life of leisure and opportunity. Um, first thing to notice is the way we put headings. You can see there are many, many, many headings. Sapche Mumbo Yorowa. So this must be clear when you translate. In Tibetan, it's not, it's clear, but it's not, you know, it's not immediately noticeable. So uh, it's all important that when you translate, if you have one heading, you put it either in bold, you put it in bold, right? And then when you put afterwards, you put, you indent. You indent, you understand? One, two, three is indented, right? Everybody has their own way. Every publisher has his own way of, of doing this. But the most important thing, because we are, in, we Westerners are so lazy, we want, and we want everything instantly. We want to go straight to it. I can look at this page and I can see one, two, three very quickly. It has to be clear. In Tibetan, it takes a long time, right, to find Niba Sumba Kabado, something like this. But in English, we need to go quickly. So how you do it is your decision. No, it's not your decision. It's editor's decision. When you translate, you give to editor, right? When I give my works to editor, it can take three months editing. These days, we have email. So, and we have Microsoft Word. And you know on Microsoft Word you can have something called tracking. Do you know this, tracking? Microsoft Word, can you hear That if you, um, the editor, I send this in, the editor looks at it and he makes some suggestion. He'll make some suggestion and it comes out in red. This is called tracking. So he sends back to me and I can see, oh, this is, this is not right, that's not right, this is, he should be this. And then I accept or reject with this, you know. So if you use Microsoft Word, if you use Apple, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not Apple, I'm not a Mac man. I'm PC man, right? So if you use PC and you use Microsoft Word, you go into the section at the top where it says review. And there you'll see track changes. You press this, track changes, and every time you make a change, it will come out in a different color. <coughs> but the original will stay there. Ra, delete your mare. It will stay there. It'll just have a line through it. Do you know this? 
You must learn this if you don't know it. It's very useful for communication between editor and translator. Very important. Yeah. So, the actual way to take full advantage of a life of leisure and opportunity. Now, here, this is a translation of the word Nipa uh, is B. Okay. Nipa is B. Um, uh, the actual way to take full advantage of a life of a is presented in three sections. Look at this sentence here. The actual way. So actual way is su nge po su nge. So nge often is translated as real or actual. Real and actual are not the same. Okay. Here real or actual. Actual means the the, the, the practice of doing it, not theory. Practice, the, the actual, actual. Real sinner is opposite of zuma, ra. Real, like um, zuma. Then you say, thing on thing on Is this real? That's real, ra. This is not real, this is actual. Actual means ngusu yopate. Uh, like this. Actual way. Now, he has got here to take full advantage of. And um, a life of leisure and opportunity, that's in, not in the Tibetan, is presented in three sections. Sum yores. Now I want to look at this full advantage of. To take full advantage of is translation of Ningbo Lemba. Ningbo Lemba. You think this is good translation? Ningbo Lemba. So, in English, full advantage means gokal. Um, uh, to take advantage is gokal lemba. Right? You take advantage, gokal lemba, right? Right? Gokal lemba means there is an opportunity. Gokal is opportunity, right? There is opportunity, you take it. It is gokal. So, you take advantage means to take the opportunity. Here, advantage means opportunity. Right. It doesn't mean advantage means that it doesn't mean uh, pinion or something like this. It means opportunity. You take advantage, right? So I'm in India. I take advantage of being in India. I don't sit around and you know chai shop and drink. I I I mean I'm in Sana, so I can use the library and, uh, and there are many scholars here and I can ask questions. I am taking advantage of that. I take advantage of it, right? That's what I to take advantage means. Okay? So, here, to take advantage of a human body is because a human body is so rare. When you have one, you must take... It's a great opportunity. So this is the meaning of advantage. But this is... I think Ningbo is something different, huh? Ningbo is like essence, isn't it? Yeah, essence. So... Often uh, this, this is described like a, a bee. Okay, bung Ah, bungwa. Bungwa meto meto ki nyingbo lengedwa. This is not taking advantage. The bee does not take advantage of the flower. It takes the essence of the flower. Air the essence is right in the middle of the flower. You have uh, you have the uh, loma and you have the the, the dabma. Ningbo mare. Ningbo is right in the middle. So, it takes essence. But these translators have decided to translate Ningbo as advantage. This is their decision. Personally, I'm not sure. I think maybe I would not do this, but the meaning is there. Full advantage means full is like uh, not just chega mare, gachaka tambare. Full. So this is Ningbo, full advantage of the human body. So you take full advantage. So this is their decision. They have decided to use this, right? The actual way to take, right? And you take Lemba, full advantage. Okay. Otherwise, Ningbo, like in Sherab Ningbo, sometimes translated as Heart Sutra, right? Because the heart is the Ning Ningra. So Ningbo, and also Desi Shepa Ningbo. The essence of the uh, Tathagata uh, essence, right? There, Ningbo is translated as essence. It can't be Tathagata advantage, impossible. 
and possible. So Ningpo does not mean advantage, but they have decided to translate it because they feel that this brings out the best meaning of the word Ningpo. That's their decision, right? And I said yesterday, there, the translator was a team. I think there are eight or nine people. So sometimes a team is good. But sometimes when there's a team, everybody... <laughs> so, you know, they have to take full advantage of a life of leisure and opportunity. So a life of leisure and opportunity is teljor. Okay? Telwa means leisure. Right? Now, leisure has this meaning of uh, freedom, leisure. There is work time and there is leisure time. Leisure time, you know, so so double, you can do what you like, right? That's your leisure time. So, in the, as a human being, we have lots of leisure to st study. Animals, they have no leisure. So this, they have to leisure. This is, Delbo means, sometimes Delbo means slowly, isn't it? Delbo, Delbo, Delbo means slowly, right? But here this leisure. Here, opportunity. Now, opportunity, Jorwa. Jorwa. Actually, as I said, advantage and opportunity have the same meaning here. You take advantage, you take opportunity. Um, sometimes this word Jorwa is translated as an endowment. Ah, Oh, so you have what you you have these you have the Jorah means you have something, right? You are in so we have endowments. Endowment, endowment or opportunity. Right. The actual way to take full advantage of a life of leisure and opportunity. Eh? Page ninety eight. This they use this text for the translation, because if you see there's page 98 at the bottom. When you translate, you must put in the Tibetan text number, page number. Otherwise, you can't find it. You must put it in, right? Critical edition, page number in square brackets. Very important. Mm. Is in three sections. De la sum, yore. You know, okay. Is presented in three sections. Okay, that's fair enough, but you can say... Um, uh, yeah, is given in three sections, or is you can just say is in three sections. Presented is not necessary. Presented is namshak. We pre present is like this. You know, just presented. Here he uses passive tense. Is presented, not just on carpet presents. Is presented. Okay, in three sections, and after this you have colon. Colon, not semicolon, not full stop. Colon. Colon means that something new is coming. Right? Usually some heading or something is, is coming. Right? Yeah. If you said, you know, there are 50 states of America. Semicolon. Massachusetts, Tennessee, da 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 da. So that's how you use a colon. Semicolon is only used if the sentence is not complete, but there is a verb in both sentences, in both parts. Semicolon is more difficult. Colon is clear. This is co sometimes people use a dash. You can use dash, but most probably best is colon. So then it says one. Training the mind in the stages of the path, shared with persons of small capacity. Um, and then in brackets, chapters nine to sixteen. This is giving the reader some information that is not in the Tibetan, where can you find this? So from chapters 9 to chapter 16 is the is the Kebu Chungo. The Tibetan says, Kebu Chungo da Tumo e Lam Kirimba La Lo Changwa. Training is not a verb. Training is what we call a gerund. Do you know gerund? Gerund? No? A gerund is when you take a verb, right, and make it uh, a, like a noun. For example, uh, uh, to walk 
is a verb, right? If I say walking is good for you, there walking is like a noun. It's a gerund. It's an activity. It's the subject of the sentence. Walking is good for you. So walking is a subject of a sentence. Therefore, it's not a verb. It's a. It's a. It's what some people call it verbal noun. And training normally in Tibetan. When you say gerund is used by putting this wa on the end, zhang wa. Not always, but here, zhang wa, training, re, draw, going. Draw. So, lo zhang wa. This is future, lo zhong, lo zhang. Training the mind. Um, this is a whole, you know, kadampa, uh, they say mind training, right? Mind training. As a noun, it's mind training. Mind means what? What is mind? Mind is, is a very strange word in English, huh? mind. It has many meanings, right? You have to be careful. So when you have Tibetan, you have sem, lo, rikpa, shepa, all these things. You have to be very careful as you translate. If you do lorik, then you must be very careful. Here, not so important. Lo, jang. You train the mind. Yeah, you tra In English, mind is the non-physical part of me. This is body. Everything else is mind. Not consciousness. Consciousness is a gyun. It's more like a, a stream. You know, when someone is dead, there is no conscious. We say there is no consciousness. We don't say there is no mind. There is no consciousness. Because this gyun, gyun chebrava, the stream of consciousness is cut. So consciousness is that. Also consciousness means like aware consciousness. If you faint, if you drink too much chong, you fall over, what, what do you lose? Consciousness. You don't lose your mind, you lose your consciousness. Because, you know, jemba mebrava, tongba cha. That's consciousness. So you, consciousness means this knowing and stream. Mind is just non-physical part of me. Mind. Mind. Okay? Mind. I can train my body. I can train my mind. If I do yoga and, you know, I train my body. If I do the train my mind, it's lojong. So. Sometimes mind, you know, we say, I don't mind. I don't mind. Their mind is like a, is, is a verb. I don't mind means I don't care. It's okay. No problem. I don't mind. Yeah? Sometimes mind, care, we say, we say mindfulness. Be mindful. If you're in India, be mindful. You know. Here, their mind means kare. Uh, uh, you, you must be mindful. You must take care. It means your your mind must be awake. We say she has a good mind. This means intelligent. Good heart. Good heart. Good mind. We say good heart. Good mind. No, no. Good heart, good mind. Dead, dead. Mind dead, or <laughs> mind covered it. Anyway, so like that. Please, here is easy, but I in, like, mind is not easy word. In English, it's really strange. When scientists talk about when they put all these, you know, they are looking for consciousness, not mind. You know, when they put the on the, and they, they, you know, when someone has died and they're going to took them, you know. Lama Chumba go took them. And um, they, we say, they put on, you know, they're looking for, it's consciousness, not mind. Consciousness is a is this thing that travels. And then perception, rikpa, lo, lo, They're different, but anyway. So training the mind. So training the mind in the stages of the path, Lamgirimba Las. Now, so, as you know, is adjective. 
of path. It must describe what path, you know? So training the mind in the stages of the path, then after that comes description, what path? The path that is shared with, you can put that is if you want to, that not which is, that is shared with persons of small capacity, right? So here you don't need you know the difference between that and which? Huh? That and which. You, do you know the difference? Huh? I am in Sanath, which is close to Varanasi. Or that is close to Varanasi, which is correct. Oh, yeah, why? Why is it correct? Mm. Huh? Because... I am in Sarnath is a complete sentence. Complete. Anything else is extra information. Ra. I am in Sarnath, comma, which is where the Buddha taught first, which is near Varanasi, which is da 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 da. So, comma, which. So, which is a non defining relative clause which gives extra information. If you take it out, sentence is still okay, right? If I say, um, this is the man that stole my money, this is the man that stole, if I say, this is the man, it's not complete. If I say, this is the man, and you say, what man? The man that stole my money. So, if the sentence is not complete, then any extra information must be that. No comma. This is the man that stole my money. Right? Okay? Now here, you have got training the mind in the stages of the path. What path? The path that is shared. However, you don't need that is, not necessary. Here, not necessary. Shared sana, usually share means uh, I have one piece of cake, some for you, some for you, some for you. This is not the meaning. Here, share means in common with. Wow. We all, you are all studying Buddhist philosophy. You have that in common in common. That is in common with each other, you know. His Holiness always says, we all want happiness, we don't want suffering. We have this in common. How you say? This is our common goal, our common path. So instead of shared, you can say in common with. In common with. Is shared with. Okay. The persons of small capacity, keba chungo. The plural of person sometimes is people. But there is a plural of person, persons. Right? Okay. One person, two people. Generally speaking. Yeah, there are many people in India. You don't say there are many persons in India. No. But here, people is not right. You can't say people. Shared with people. Well, maybe. Maybe it's okay. Maybe it's okay. Why not? So people of small capacity. We're talking about people. Kanzak. Kanzak. Kiebu. I think the problem is this word kiebu. Is uh, uh, Sanskrit purusha, um, isn't it? It means a uh, person, or but it also means... Um, Nyupa. Uh, so, Kebo Chungu is translated as persons of small capacity. Actually, Tibetan just say small person, but that means so <laughs> small persons and large person. <laughs> so, what does Kebo mean? Kebo Chung. What does it mean? So, here what they are doing is they are translating definition, not the uh, uh, 
not trash it, just the, the trust it turned out. This is doing good, secure my day. Sometimes secure, sometimes doing good, you know. This is okay, otherwise nobody will understand a path shared with small persons. Look at it, you know, small people, you know, it's ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense in English, small people, you know, like this. It's not good. So that's okay. But this is a technical term, kibu. And so, uh, yeah, that did it. So then the others are the same. Training the mind in the stages of the path shared with the person, medium. Kare. A drink, ra drink, drink, drink. Da medium or intermediate, you can say. Intermediate or medium. Medium is, medium usually means in the middle, right? Medium, you know. Translator is a medium between author and audience, right? Uh, 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 interpreter. Normally when we talking of oral translation, we say this is interpreter. It's written, is translator. But, you know. Anyway, interpreter is a medium between lama and audience. Medium. Medium. Like this. But here, medium means... Uh, not high, not low, in the middle, medium, medium, jing ra. But also we can say middle, you know, you have an older brother, younger brother, and the one, middle brother, no, medium brother, no. <laughs> medium brother. Medium, you know, in a restaurant you go, how you want is cooked. Well cooked, not well cooked, medium cooked. So medium sometimes means kiel. Kiel, right, kiel. Here means drink, medium, intermediate. How do you translate bado? Intermediate state. intermediate state, not medium state. No, it doesn't matter. No, intermediate state. Or you can just say bado. Everybody knows bado. So please remember, medium capacity, intermediate capacity, both are possible here. But elsewhere, not. Mm, then it? Turning the mind in the stage of the path of a person of great capacity. There are three divisions in this section. So up above it says it presented in three sections. But here there says three divisions. It's the same. You can just say there are three divisions, there are three sections. It doesn't matter. The actual training of thought. Now, what the uh, translator has done here, because Jerumbuchi is, is chungo sampa, not law. Uh, here is uh, uh, karesa. Mm. Uh, but here is uh, Sampa. So the translators have decided instead of saying mind, actually training of mind, they have training of thought. Because I don't know why Jason Kappa uses law and then he uses Sampa. Do you know why? I don't know why. Please tell me if you know. Because I don't know. Sampa. Sampa is thought, well, thinking, Sampa. Kare mm. Samguto, training of thought. But actually, training of thought sounds a little, I don't know. Can you train a thought? You can train a monkey. You can train a parrot. You can train a body. You can train your mind. You can train a dog. Can you train a thought? Just, I don't know. Train a thought. You can try, maybe thinking would be better. Use the gerund. For example, to think is a verb. Thinking is a gerund, right? Thinking is something animals cannot do. So thinking, maybe thinking, you could say, training of thinking. Well, that doesn't sound right either. Anyway, I don't know. 
training of thought, thought training, or whatever, training of thought, for a person of small capacity. Now the next one, Nibala, Kare, Samba de Keba, Se, 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 the measure. Okay, measure, Se, Se. When you see Se, it can mean measure, but if you see Sema, then it's completely different, you know. Sema Namdrela is a completely different, you know. But it's still related, right? Sema, in Lorik, Sema, you know, Sema. The, is this mind, you know, Bumsin Nikshe, Sema Re, Sema Mare, Sema. Because sometimes we say, you know, if a person wants to do a job, a particular job, he needs to have qualifications. This job is difficult, a lot of work, a lot of rigpa. So does this person have qualifications? If we see if yes, then we say he measures to the does the job, he measures. So we use the word measure. Measure means that it comes up to. So if a uh, I consciousness is, you know, looking at something, if it's a if it's a seme, musum sema yena, musum sema yena, this means that. It comes up to it sees it's not it's not wrong it's not it's not karesa lokta mare tushe mare so even in the word sema and se this word measure is, is there measure doesn't mean oh how how many centimeters no 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 not that measure has another meaning right and here this here the measure of the attitude you have attitude of this person. And you have keba chungu. Do they match? If they match, then this is the measure. So please remember this word measure. It's a very useful word. Sometimes in Tibetan, it's used um, shelwa. Shelwa? Shelja. 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 Shelwa means how can be measured. So. Now here, what the translators have done, now they've translated Sampa as attitude. Whereas before they translated as thought, now they've translated as attitude. So, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe in the first one, they should have used attitude. Training the attitude. What is an attitude? You know this word attitude? What does it mean? Attitude. What's Tibetan for attitude? If we said he has a good attitude, huh? Chepa, chepa, chepa is chelam, no? Chepa is uh, behavior or conduct. Is it? Attitude is only thinking, only mind, mental. Uh. Tawa. Yes, tawa. Good attitude. Yeah. Hmm. Someone has a bad attitude, right? A uh, shika. Shika could personality, yeah, maybe. Attitude means the way they look. Yes, tawa, maybe tawa, the way they look at something. If you have some work to do, you say, oh, it's too difficult, I can't do this, and that's too hard, you know. This is bad attitude. Because you look at it in a way. So not it's not the right we say this is not the right attitude. The right attitude is to say, Yes, I can do it, you know, I will you know, how you say sem shumba maje like this. Attitude. So attitude means the way you look at the world. Hmm. So now as we say, uh, yeah, so these days in slang we say you have attitude. If someone is really angry and negative, we say you have attitude. You have bad. You have an attitude. We don't say bad. We just say you have attitude. This is American slang. You know, something. Normally, attitude is not a Dharma word. Tawa is usually translated as view, right? View. Tawa. What is your view? Sometimes view means opinion. What is your What is your view on this? Good or not good? Is this good? What is your view? What is your opinion? Not attitude. No, 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 no. So attitude is like samsul, maybe sambesul, re samsul. The way you think or tawa. 
I, I know I'm taking a long time, but I want gradually you to uh, taste the language. <laughs> this is why. It takes a long, we can take hours, it doesn't matter. Okay, that is it. Um, attitude of person. Then, next word, de la lokpa tokpa selba o. De la de sokare. Are, de la. Samba, samba de la lokpa tokpa. Lok tok. Uh, again, this is a word used in uh, lorik. Uh, lokpa tokpa. Tokpa and lokpa. Lokshe. Loklam. Lokpetawa. Usually lokpa in Tibetan means, huh? Reverse. So, um, on its own, lokpa can mean perverse, reverse, wrong, uh, something like this. Lokpa. Tokpa. Uh, so many mean topa. Usually topa means thinking, thought, conceptual, thinking, concept. This is a word that needs very much thinking about because it occurs in many, many different uh, uh, genres in, in Lorik and in Uma. Usually Namtok, isn't it? Namtok, Namba Tokpa. But generally Tokpa means, generally Tokpa means thinking or conceptualization. So here he's put misconception. Mis means Lokpa. Lokpa Tokpa, misconception. It's okay, it's good. Misconception. Now the conception. If you in English, if you think of something, now if you think of um if you think of uh, your mother or your father or anything, this is a conception. We say this is a conception. I can the verb is to conceive. I conceived of you know I conceived of uh, something. It's a conception. It's not real. We say it's only a conception. It's not real. It's just a conception. It's just a thought. It's just a conception. So, the conception is the actual process. Yeah? The verb is to conceive, and the process is conceptualizing. So you conceive a concept or conceptual. Uh, you conceive a concept by conceptualizing. Conceptualizing is, you know, thinking, thinking, thinking. So pl you'll see this word a lot, concept, conceptualize, conceive. Tokpare. Maybe later we'll look at this. Uh, and then it says, tokpa, lokpa, tokpa, selwa. They've translated cell as clearing up. S remove, dispel, get rid of, clear up. Um, why they have used clear up here? Because you, um, when we talk about misconceptions, we clear them up, right? You clear up. Normally you clear up doubts. If you have some doubt, I don't know, can you help me with it? Can you clear, clear up normally means like, you know, after you finish the food, then they come along and clean the table and uh, this is called clearing up. Normally that's clearing up. But here means to resolve a doubt, clear up. Clear selvajar is to make clear, right? But you could also say remove or uh, dispel. You know, if, if, when it's dark and you switch on the light, the light dispels the darkness. Selwa. Maybe so. This is okay, also possible. There are two selwas. There's Bao Sala Sel and Sa Dembo Sel. A little different, I think, maybe. But this choice of clearing up, this is just one possible translation. Removing is also good. Remove. I think remove is stronger, huh? You remove, you take it out, and you throw it outside. That's remove. Mm. That did it. Loba toba selva o, selpa o. Tambola ni, tambo kare. Ah, ore, jik ten chima, tenye gilo kebatan, jik ten chimar, 
Dewe tap demba o. Taji ten chima. Developing a state of mind that's ndirve. Developing a state of mind um, that strives diligently for the sake of future lives. Sik ring budwa. Ja chikten chikten chima. Next world. Chikten is normally world, right? But here, obviously, chikten means life. You can't say next. You can say the next world. You can say that in English. But it doesn't, it's not quite right. And then I'll see you in the next world, we say. When I die, I'll see you in the next world. Not this world, but the next world. You can say that. Or next life. But I think next world is a little bit. So this is good. Here he says future lives. Future. Ah, chima, chima, are. Tatare. So here it's put in a plural. But it's not necessarily plural. It could be future next life. Future lives means this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Right? But in the Tibetan it's not clear. Chikten Chima is next one or how many lives? Chikten, what this life? It's next, next, next or just one? It's not clear. You ah? Chima Sanakare. Next to ah. So it could be uh, future lives is next and next and next and next and next, isn't it? Marbe. Chima. Lord Jamasana? Next year. Not future years, is it? No. So I don't know. Chikten Chima. Normally this uh practice of uh uh is for next life, huh? Mainly. After that, we will wait and see, right? <laughs> but then after, in this life, we die, and we go into the bardo, and then we are reborn. So this is the one that's important. Huh? After that, it, we'll, we'll deal with that later. But, so maybe it should be just next life. I don't know. You need to look at commentary. You see so many choices you have to make. You know, difficult. Mm. So he says future lives. Okay? So you have uh, Kewa Chima and uh, Se Chima. So you can, some people say future birth, future life, rebirth. You can choose, there's not much difference there. Mm. Then uh, developing a state of. Mm, developing a state of mind that strives diligently for the sake of future lives. Lo kiapa. Now law is translated as state of mind. Before it was translated as mind. Now state of mind. What is the difference between mind and state of mind? Right? Mind is general. A state of mind is one a particular state within that, you know, mind. Yeah? It's a state of mind. If I'm happy, that's a happy state of mind. If I am sad, that's a sad state. Both are mind. One is a happy state, one is a sad state. State is, um, I don't know. It's like, ngang, 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 semgi, ngang sul, or something like that. Marebe. Ah, dwe. <laughs> so anyway, normally when you do sem sem jung, sem is translated as primary mind, right? And sem jung sometimes translated as mental factors, but sometimes as states of mind. A state, like a, like a, a, a in India is one country, but there are many states. Himachal Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh. So a state is something inside. So it's a state of mind. Developing, kyapa. Some people say generate, some people say develop. Little difference. Huh? You develop when you're a child, you become adult. That's you develop. That's developing. It's some kind of natural 
growth you develop. When Sarnath was nothing, and over when I first came, no shops. But now it is developed, developed, developed. And Varanasi phew, is developed, developed. It has developed. It's not generate. Generate means to create. You generate electricity, right? You create. You generate. A generator creates electricity. Generate means to create. Kepa can mean both develop and create, right? Sem kye. Chanchub ki sem kepa. That's normally generate. Generate means, you know, give birth to. Develop is slowly. So there's difference between develop and generate. Generate seems to me like one time. And develop is slowly. Develop. You have to de So here they chose develop. Is that okay, that's good because it takes a long time. Developing um, a state of mind. What state of mind? That. Yeah, that. Not which. That. Strives diligently. Cover it. Dunye. Dunye is not a verb. Dunye gilo. Dunye is a verb or not a verb? Dunye. Dunye jerwa. Dunye jekore. Dunye jekhe. Dunye gilo. Hmm. So, uh, dunya is not a verb, huh? Can be verb? Okay. Re. Ah, don't do nyewa. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Don't do nyewa. Don't do nyewa. Jegore. Okay, okay. Good. All right. So, strive is work hard for. Betsun jaba is usually betsun jaba. Strive. You strive for something. If you want to make money, you know, you, these, these chai wallers outside, you know, they work, they get up early, they make their paranta so you can come and eat and their chai and they work and they work until 10 o'clock at night so they can make money. This is striving. This is striving. Work hard. Diligently means correctly, not going like that. Tongbo, diligent, constantly, properly. A good student is diligent student. So they're taking these two words, strive and diligently, and put them together. I don't think you need diligently. Not necessary. You can just say strive. Dundunyawa means to work for, right? You have a goal and you work for it. Marabe. So you you work you can say I worked that works for. Strive diligently. It's okay. I don't think it's necessary to put both. To me, it sounds like overkill, we say in English, overkill. Too much. <laughs> but anyway, who am I? <laughs> you mustn't tell this to any app, okay? This is secret, right? I don't want these translators to hear me criticizing. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I get in trouble. <laughs> so anyway, striving is usually betun jabba. Whenever you, or tsundru, whenever you see betun jabba or, or tsundru jabba, it's a strive. It's a good word. Diligently, diligently means properly. You know? Now, for the sake of. Now, it's not. For the sake of is not there. Normally, for the sake of is dundu or chetu. But it's not here. In Tibetan, you know. What you could say, developing a state of mind that strives for future lives. It's not necessary for the sake of. It's not in the Tibetan, and it's not necessary. However, it's okay, because that's what you're striving for. You're striving for next life. You're striving for the sake of. It's the it's, it's same meaning. But normally, for the sake of is chetu or tundu. For the sake of all sentient beings, sentient tamsiki tundus, for the sake of all sentient beings, that there is sake of is good. Mm. Um, future lives. Then, ah, relying upon the means for achieving happiness in the next life. Jiten chima. Yeah. See, in the first one they put future lives, 
And this one they put next life. But the meaning is the same. Jiten Chima. Jiten Chima la Dewa Tap Temba O. Jiten Chimar Dewa Tap Temba O. Relying upon Temba to de, uh, depend upon, to rely upon. Temba mm-hmm. O. Again, use the Jaran. Temba. Relying, depending. Tops in method, right? Method or means. Check about it. If you say top, then shut up. Usually top is method. No, uh, some people say means, some people say method. So, so, top, 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 top. Top is the way to accomplish something, right? So it's the method, the means. The chick, what it? Method, then achieving happiness. Jiten chimala dewa tap ale achieving yo marwa. There's no word for achieving in Tibetan, but in English we have to have a, a verb. Relying upon the mean. No, no. Relying upon the means for happiness. That's okay. Not necessary. We're relying upon the means for happiness. In the next life, I think next life is better than future lives, huh? Because we're talking about when you die, this life. Mm, that is it. Okay. Then, Tangbola, Ni, Sere, Mare, Shi, Ah, Mare, Ni, Ni, Dwe, Hm, Jiten Dila, Ringdu, Mi, Nebar. Chiwa Jesu Temba Sambatang. Jiten Chima La Jita Gyuar Drawa Ni Ki De Duk Samba O. Ta Ni Je. Mindfulness of Death. The contemplation that you will not remain long in this world. Now, um, look at the structure of the sentence here. He's got Mindfulness of Death, comma. The contemplation that you will not remain long in this world. It could be mindfulness of death, comma, which is extra information, right? Which is the contemplation that you will not remain long in this world. The Tibetan says, Jitindila Rindu Mi Nepa, stop, Chua Jesu Tamba. So it's the same. It's kind of divided up, isn't it? Um, so in this sentence, in English, they put Chua Jesu Temba first. And Jigdin Dila Rindu Mineba second. Well, the Tibetan is the other way around, but it doesn't matter. In English, we like to put the main thing first. Tibetan is opposite. Tibetan take da 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 da, and you have to read all the way to the end to find out. Oh, that's what you're talking about. You know, <laughs> you know when they make a praise, the prostration is kangi kangi shabda na 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 na. Jambe yang like that. Oh, jambe yang. <laughs> we like to put jambe yang at the beginning in English. We like to put it at the beginning. I prostrate to Manjushri, who da 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 like this. We like to do this. Otherwise, we don't know what you're talking about. Anyway. <laughs> So here, mindfulness of death is the is the name, right? Chiva Jesu Temba. Jesu Temba the web. Now Chiva Jesu Temba asks. So now Jesu Temba. Now this word Temba okay, death, Chiva is okay. Mindfulness. Hmm. Yes, yeah, okay. Mindf- I said before, be mindful. Mindfulness is you know, mindful in English means to always be aware. Don't forget. If you're mindful, you don't forget. Yeah. Jamba sometimes means mindful. In in um Bodhicha Avatara, there's Jamba and there's Sheshin. Right? Jamba is mindfulness. Sheshin is alertness or awareness, right? Because Jamba no Jamba is always, you know, looking, always remembering. Sometimes Jamba means the definition of Jamba is Deba you la mikbarwa. Deba you. Something in the past. But not always does Jempa means memory. Not always. We translators have a big problem with the word Jempa. 
Because sometimes it doesn't mean memory, doesn't mean mindfulness. In I'm mindful, you know, of the of the other, of what of everything. Mindful. That's mindfulness. You know, you're mindful, right? So here, Jesu Jamba is translated as mindfulness. Some people translate it as remembering, remembering death. That's okay. It's not remembering something in the past, is it? It's remembering something in the future. You're remembering your own death. Well, no, you can't remember your own death. <laughs> remembering death doesn't mean remembering in the past. Remembering death means remembering that you will die. So there you can say remember, that's okay. This word is very difficult. Jemba, Sheshin, Bagyu. These three, very difficult to translate. Bagyu, how do you translate Bagyu? Conscientiousness. But even then, not quite. Bagyu, Sheshin, Jemba. These three, very difficult to translate. Here, I think mindful is good. But if you want to put remembering, that's okay. So, mindfulness of death, which is, comma, this is relative, uh, non -def uh, defining relative, non defining relative cause, extra information, which is the contemplation, contemplation, uh, sampa. So here, sampa is translated as contemplation. Normally, when we say to some gom, sampa is contemplation. Sampa can mean thinking, like in some law, kirang kare samgutu. That's thinking. That's okay. Um, but thinking is just general. Contemplation means you have some particular sub, like almost like meditation. If you contemplate something, you, you sit and you're quiet. You, you're quiet and you contemplate. That's contemplation. Thinking is just, oh, I'm thinking of going to Delhi. I'm thinking that is dakasra. But contemplation is serious. So you contemplate death. You can think about death, that's okay. But here, contemplation. Right, cover it. Contemplation that you will not remain long in this world. Jigdin dila. Where? Ringdu minepa. You will not stay, or you will not remain, you will not be in this world for long. You will not remain long in this world. You will not be in this world for long. You can put for long at the end. You can put it like this. It doesn't matter. Um, please notice that headings have no full stop, okay? No full stop. Some publishers say there should be full stop. But because they're, they're not really complete sentences, so you don't need a full stop. Um, on, on headings. Then, uh, con contemplating what will occur in your future life. Semicolon. My, my colon. Why colon there? Contemplating what will occur in your future life. The happiness or suffering of the two types of beings. Jitin chimala jita gyuar. Jita gyuar means what will happen, what, what is going to occur. Occur is to happen, yeah? Contemplating what will occur in your future life. And there they put colon. Because I think you could put semicolon there also. Mm. No, maybe colon is better. Contemplating what will occur in your future life. Oh yeah, well, what are you contemplating? The happiness or so, so colon is better there. But I wonder if there's another way of doing this. Uh, contemplating, yeah, contemplating, maybe contemplating the happiness of the sufferings of the two types of being, which is what will occur, maybe like that. Then you don't need colon. Contemplating the happiness or suffering, or suffering, and uh, happiness or suffering of the two types of beings, comma, which is what will occur or what will happen, that's also possible. Um, the happiness or suffering, and suffering, or suffering. That's it. Mm. Okay. Uh, 
to two types of beings. Droa. Many people and many translators translate Droa as they translate Drashe. Droa. Why Droa? Droa is a Kerene, Kerene, Droa. Nyumongi, Wongi, Keredila, Keredine, Kerechimala, Droa, 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 Droa. So that the Droa. So they translate Droa as my greater or wanderer. My greater. My greater means to po. Uh, go from one place to another. Po. You know, my greater. We say birds migrate. You know, in the in the winter, birds go down south. In the summer, they come up north. This is called migrating. But I don't like this translation. I don't like this at all. <laughs> Why? Because if you say I. Uh, have compassion for all my greaters. It sounds so strange in English to say my greaters, you know. That's the first reason. I'm not a my greater, and my greater is, you know, sounds like I'm a bird. The other reason is that in Tibetan, if I say draw, what do you think of? Do you think of someone going from life to life, or do you just think of Semchen? Huh? You think Semchen, right? So, I mean, and so when someone says draw, they don't mean someone who goes from life to life. They mean Semchen or Lichen or Kare, Shamba. Like this. Draw, Semchen, don't you about? So I don't think you need to translate. Translate as being or living being. It's much better. Also, I believe, I'm not sure, but I believe the word draw existed before Buddhism came to Tibet. Marave. You don't know? I don't know. But if draw, also draw is a translation of Sanskrit word. Um, I can't remember what it means. But this Sanskrit word is not Buddhist word. It just means, you know, someone who exists. Like in English we have the word being, sentient being, living being. Being is what? Being is a verb, huh? it's a gerund. Being what? What are you being? I'm a human being. What? Being what? This is drashe. Drashe is not, a, you know. Also there's another word, creature. We are all creatures. Why? Because we are all created by God. This the creature means that which is created, created by God. But if you're a Buddhist, then you are, don't believe in God. So creature, you can't translate creature as kunjo uh, gizuba or something like that. It doesn't make sense. So drashe and dunda choose dunda. If you don't know dunda, choose senyi. Translate senyi or... But, but, Sometimes the drashe is, you know. So two types of sentient beings, two types of living beings. Mm. Okay, thank you. Sorry, it was too long. <laughs>